And welcome back to The Factor Uncensored. Some shocking allegations made against the Trump presidential campaign from last year. Now, the report in the New York Times says a company that handled the former president's fundraising efforts essentially scammed supporters out of millions of dollars. How? According to the report, once a donor gave, say, $500, they would have a recurring charge reoccurring charge on their account until they opted out. The Trump campaign had to refund $64.3 million to donors who complained to their banks and credit card companies. Now, the fine print showed you had to check a box to opt out. Otherwise, you would be charged over and over again by the presidential campaign of then former President Donald Trump. Our guests are here to talk about this strange and shocking situation. Uh, State Representative Ron Reynolds, let's begin with you when you hear this investigative report out of the New York Times. Isaiah, the first thing that came to my mind was what I heard many years ago. Uh, when Maya Angelou said, when people show you who they are, believe them the first time. These charges, it was so fraudulent. It was so deceptive and unethical to do people out of reoccurring donations. It is, it is beyond uh, uh, the, the pale for anybody, even Donald Trump went to a new low. Here are people who are making a donation to your campaign, doing something for you, and then they get duped with bills, I mean, from their bank, reoccurring charges of, of thousands, thousands of dollars. I've, I've read reports, Isaiah, that people literally, their bank accounts were wiped out. These were people on a fixed income. These were people who weren't able to pay their light and their gas and their rent. This is, this is tragic, and this is, the president should be held accountable for this. This is, again, once again, showing the president that he didn't care about the people. It was all about him. Now, we're told in this report, Eric Dick, that uh, during the president's other campaign of Stop the Steal with allegations of voter fraud around the country, where he raised millions of dollars, he essentially took that money and started refunding people. Your thoughts on that, Eric? Oh, look, I think this is, it's been 71 days since uh, Donald Trump's been in our office. And the fact that we're complaining about people donating to his campaign is, I, I think it's just a slow news day. Um, I think there's so many other things that we can complain about, whether it's Donald Trump or other politicians, but this is just nonsensical. I don't, I'm surprised that this made the news. Wow, I'm happy to elaborate more. Dr. Wow. Dr. Here from you. Is it a slow news day? No, I don't think so. There's plenty of things going on. And this is very, very important. And as a matter of fact, this is important for consumers. It's not just about uh, Mr. Trump. By the way, uh, I don't see anything that indicates that Mr. Trump is the one who decided that this sinister thing is going to happen. This is the kind of thing that happens in our uh, society right now, different kinds of scams that are going on. And none of us could afford to have someone, we, we donate $10, $100, or $1,000, and they continue to zap our account. We all need to be alert for this kind of stuff. But this is way beyond the pale. And I'm really glad to see in the story that uh, many of the people got refunds. Just a shocking development. We'll continue this conversation on The Factor when we come back. Stay with us. And welcome back to The Factor on Sense. Well, we will continue our conversation that we started only a few minutes ago, an investigation from the New York Times accusing the Trump campaign of taking more money from the bank accounts of donors than they were authorized or the person pledged to. Now, many of them say they were wiped clean. Their bank accounts left completely empty. That's where our panel picks up. And just today, President Donald Trump says this uh, report by the New York Times is disparaging and uh, untrue and despicable. So we'll pick up with our panel right here on The Factor Uncensored. Representative Reynolds, let's bring you back into the conversation. When we hear uh, many of the people that New York, the New York Times spoke with saying, they basically left me broke. My account was emptied by this campaign. It, it, my heart goes out to them. I mean, these people were supporters. They were proud to make this one donation, Isaiah. It, when, when I make a donation, I make it with the 
understanding that it's a one time or with my full knowledge that it's going to be reoccurring. It was it was hidden in fine print that you had to opt out. That is false, is misleading, and it's unethical. There's no way that this should have happened to these people. And there's no way that the Trump campaign shouldn't pay interest on top of just re merely refunding this money. They need to they got an interest free loan from duking these people out of this money. Eric, let's bring you back into the conversation. You don't see where this almost uh, could be considered criminal, where you're taking advantage of your very own supporters and giving them the option of opting out, but making it so incredibly difficult to find uh, the, the checkbox because of the fine print. And I just kind of step, you know, I am a plaintiff lawyer. I exclusively and I do, uh, you know, insurance claims. I'm a consumer lawyer. So I see a lot of, you know, deceptive kind of behavior. I don't think this gets anywhere near for a lot of reasons. Um, one is, uh, you know, but you can Aaron, always complain let's, let's your credit card. Situation. If you are donating under the impression that you're donating $500, but then the next week another 500 comes out and another 500 and you are, were under the impression that you are only giving fi giving giving five hundred dollars. You don't think that's deceptive and misleading to the average uh, voter and supporter out there? Unfortunately, there's a lot of things like that going on, and it's more than just a donation. That's if you didn't read the fine print. On every contract, you got to make sure you read and you look at. So I mean, if but you're saying there be some kind instance, of good faith there. I think there should be a lot of good faith in many things, but this is just one instance of many instances. There's far worse situations that happen uh, besides someone donating. They should pay attention to their banking account. They should pay attention to their credit card. If they see charges come out, they need to dispute it. They should get a better credit card company. Uh, someone that's able to, you know, that if you make a complaint, you know, it comes out relatively without hassle. And what I hear from this is that, uh, that Trump ended up that his campaign ended up reimbursing people for for um, you know the contributions that they dispute, and I don't see I don't I I see the, the argument of a you know a, a a low interest loan, but I don't know about that. I think there's much worse behaviors out there than uh, what's happened with the uh, you know these contributions, and I think this is behavior that a lot of politicians use uh, is whenever they have those boxes where where you can donate. Um, you know, if it's not, if you don't click it, then it's a recurring donation. I think it's a common practice. Now, Zay, that's, that's, that's false. Go ahead. That's, that's, that's totally, I respect Eric, but that's unequivocally false. I have not seen that. And then you could juxtapose that with what the Biden administration had. It was de minimis. So most, when you see a reoccurring, it is in fine print. It is, this is, a, do you check this box for reoccurring donation, not opt out? You check it. It's an affirmative action. So you're saying, I want this to be reoccurring for every month on the fifth of the month. That is usually what you do if you want to have a reoccurring donation. So I, I, I totally unequivocally dispute what you said. It was false. It was misleading. It was designed to do just what it did, do people out of, out of money. All right. It was theft. It was theft is what it was. And it, uh, some people probably haven't figured it out yet that what was going on. Oh, by the way, some of these were older people. Uh, at least one person died. Uh, and, and so I think it's uh, ridiculous to say, oh, you should, but by the way, this was weekly. Some of these were weekly. Yeah. I, I, I think we're transferring uh, the pain and the fault to the victim in this case, if you say that they should have been the one to check when they tried to uh, just help someone in, in a campaign. And of course, former President Donald Trump responded to say today, saying in yet another highly partisan story, the failing New York Times wrote a completely misleading one sided attack piece this weekend that tried to disparage our record setting grassroots fundraising operation during the 2020 presidential campaign.